Thank you, Father, that you have given us your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us your life. Because you live, we also shall live. Holy Spirit, you've given things to talk about. I don't know how to connect any of this. I, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse on my flesh and in my weakness. I cannot put two sentences, to, two words together. Unless you, Holy Spirit, you've got to do what only you can do. Jesus, my heart's desire is to send it to every man, woman, and child. But Lord Jesus, you don't waste your words. And I just pray right now that those who would receive these words, that it would spark them, to, that it would bear much fruit to plant more trees, not just fruit, but trees that bear forth more, bear forth more trees. Jesus, use this broken vessel for your glory's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. All right, so um, it's called On Faith. <sighs> on Faith. I, I gave a message some time ago called On Prayer. Okay. Um, this message is, people would say, hey, I want to live by faith. It breaks my heart to hear that I don't hear that. I don't hear people say, I want to live by faith. In this day and age, we have so much to see. Therein lies the problem. Yes, amen. Amen. Second, Second Corinthians 5, 7, don't turn there, is, says, For we do not live by sight, but by faith. You know, I want to suggest that be, the more you have before your eyes, the less you will have in your heart. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. The more you have before your eyes, the less you'll have in your heart. Amen. Or in a different way, you'll have more idolatry in your heart because you're living for that which you can see. Amen. Go to Hebrews 11. Now, verse 1, mm -hmm. faith is the reality or assurance of what is hoped for, the proof or conviction of what is not seen. So, that's been a puzzling verse to me every time I've, I've read that. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. I got it now. Since Leanne died, that has been the biggest, that's what I'm looking for, um, example, testimony, substance, I think it's probably the best word, of faith being made real. I got the tip of the iceberg of heaven. And not just heaven. Heaven is a place. Let's put it this way. It's a person. If Jesus is in your life, you're not going to want to go to heaven because he is the embodiment. He is the embodiment of everything right, good, and true. Seeing Jesus, the person, the second person of the Trinity, where God says, I, uh, through Paul, the Holy Spirit through Paul, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He will be, what? Curios in the Greek, Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Every knee will bow. You bow only to one that, that is in allegiance. You can't have multiple allegiances that you bow to. Well, let's call it what it is. That's idolatry. It's having a mixed allegiance. Jesus says, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. So,
So, what is the faith? What are we looking for? What are we looking forward to? We just heard the power of the resurrection message by Lana Ravenhill. What is the purpose of faith in and of itself as a thing, as a means to an end or the end itself? No. So, Abraham, Hebrews 11. Excuse me, I wrote it down. 11.10. Regarding Abraham, he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Was he looking for the city? Or was he looking for the maker? Moses. Uh, verse 26. He considered the reproach because of the Messiah to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt since his attention was on the reward. It was, what was the reward? Heaven? Heaven is, we're looking forward to it. I want to suggest to you, heaven can be here. If you're not ready here for heaven, heaven will be a disappointment. Hmm. You got to get ready here. You won't get to see heaven. You will see nothing. If you can't see heaven here, Then what do you have to live for? We are living in such a time that there is, I have never seen such uncertainty in all my life. Go to Romans 5. Now, I want to suggest to you, we're not looking to heaven. Heaven can be wearing white robes, playing some harps, and having angels' wings. If that's your idea of heaven, I don't want to be there. Romans 5. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Romans 4. I'm going to do some little background leg work to sort of bring you to that spot. Uh, I'm sorry, Romans 1, 16. 116, I'm sorry, I'm jumping. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Okay, the gospel or the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? There was creation. We fell. You need to pay for it. Jesus came for the payment. He overcame that payment. I'm going to leave you hanging because there's something left after that payment. Here's a big screaming hint so we could be with him. So we could see him. What? As he? Two letter word. We will see him as he is. is. We will see him as he is. And here's something we forget. We shall be like him. Don't even think. You need to ask the questions now. Am I like you now? If I'm not, oh God, make me. You don't get ready for the battle at the battle. The largest battle you will ever face is death. Your physical departure. That'll be the greatest battle of your life. If you're not ready for it, I'm going to forgive me for scaring people straight. It would not be a surprise if you throw your faith out. Where you say, you know what, this doesn't matter anymore. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't prepare his saints. He does. 
but let us not be found negligent in our faith, negligent in our walk, where at the very last moment, the last five seconds of our lives, Pastor Carter Collin gave a message called Footsteps in the Hallway, where he talks about a deacon, well-respected person in the church, and he said, are those, and he was on his deathbed, are those the angels? I hear footsteps, and then he says, he looks at these eyes and he turns away, not you, not you, no, no, and he grabs the person, don't let them take me, don't let them take me, and he was gone, holding on to that person's jacket. Don't let those footsteps be the wrong ones. Because you didn't Amen. behold the Messiah every waking moment of your life. That means you didn't have fellowship with him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. We forget, we complain, we complain, we grumble, we get tired, and we don't confess our pride. We think we know better. I had to confess pride this morning to, to Esther. I thought I was better than her. Guilty as charged. Where here's this Amish girl coming from a legalistic background, and I figured, and I said, Lord, I'm going to have to help her break free from bondage and this, that, whatever. And he slapped me this morning as I have never experienced so much freedom in my life. And I said, and she started praying for me. It, we were praying this morning as, as a couple. And I said, oh God, forgive me, a sinner. And I said to her, I'm sorry. I've been full of pride and I thought I was better than you. And I beg you to forgive me. I'm so sorry. Is he purging you? Are you letting him purge you? Is he purging you so hard that it forces you to weep and it begs you to, you, you, it, it makes you want to say, oh God, I can't take it anymore. Because if that's not happen, happening, I wonder if you're saved. Because Amen. sanctification is a work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Sanctification Amen. is the process Amen. where we are going from glory into glory into glory into glory into Amen. glory until we look like Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you're not sanctified, God help you. Yes. Then you better beg the fire of God to come upon you because you cannot live in this world with any form of security that you think you have. I got this promise, that promise, that promise. Baloney, it's going to hell in a handbasket. Wow. Stop. Wow. Amen. Just stop. Come on now. Because Romans 5, 4, excuse me. Uh, Romans 1 says that, that, verse 17, for in the gospel, it's the power of God of salvation. In it, the gospel, God's righteousness is revealed from the works of the law to uh, uh, obeying the rules, to obey the rules. To Is that what it says? And for... Romans 117. 117. Is that what it says? To say, hey, uh, God's righteousness is revealed by uh, being good to others and, you know, just um, obeying the rules. And uh, is, that, is that how God's righteousness is revealed? No, yes. no. No! Faith to faith. Faith to faith, yes. Amen. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by their good deeds, by... You know, um, just not offending and, and compromising. Well, yeah, I am a Christian and just going on. No! Come on. My faith. Come on. Amen. It's going to cost you. Faith is going to cost you. Yes. It's a down payment. So, not that you can get to heaven. Come on. We just read in Hebrews, not to get to heaven. I want to see that, not just the city. I want to see the maker, builder, and architect of that city, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what your faith is about. Romans 5, he says this. He says this. Skip upwards a few verses about Abraham. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise. The promise was, Romans 4, um, sorry, 4, that was 420. Verse 16. God gave a promise to Abraham after circumcision or before? After. Before the circumcision, and it showed in Romans 4, he said, 
And he became, uh, excuse me. This before, okay. Verse 10, in what way then was it credited while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while he was circumcised, but uncircumcised. Yes. The Amen. circumcision Amen. was a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith. Amen. While still uncircumcised. Faith was, the circumcision was the outflow of the faith that was already there. So if you get decided to, to give your life to Jesus and boom, you die before getting baptized, does that mean you don't get to be in God's presence? No. God forbid. Your baptism is an outflow of that faith. Yes. It doesn't guarantee your salvation. It's just an outward sign of what is already there. God did the work. You made the profession. You gave your life to the Lord. You wanted to get baptized. Man, it died. Grandpa Marvin Wimberly, Leanne's grandfather, he had a roommate, gave his life to the Lord, died two weeks later, couldn't get baptized. Is he not saved? Oh, absolutely, he will. He was. Yes, yes. The baptism, yes. The baptism was an outward sign of that which God already worked inside. Amen. That means you've got to be born again. you got to be a new creature. Amen. You cannot have new wine in you Yes. When you're an old skin. Amen. That means Amen. let the old skin go. go. Amen. That Come means day by day, if you feel like you're dying, praise God. That means every toe stub. That means every thumb smash. Every broken dish. Every burn. Every bit of your inconvenience. Every sleepless night. Every anger every fight you have with a family member, every inconvenience, every time somebody comes in drunk and you got to deal with that person for the upteenth time, God's sanctifying your heart. He says, I will not stop bringing that filth into your life until you can respond like Jesus. And until that happens, I'm going to send it until you die. And if you're not ready to deal with it, tough stink. Mm -hmm. Tough. Thank you. That's what that says, tough. Get Tough, because I want diamonds from you. Jesus is my diamond, and I want that diamond out of you. Be sanctified. Be holy, because you're not going to see God. Two things to have the power of God in you, faith and holiness. Yes. What does he say? Faith Without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, yes. it is impossible to please God. Please God. Amen. Pursue holiness, Hebrews 12, 14, for without which no one will see God. Amen. Pursue peace with all men and holiness, for without which no one will see the Lord. Amen. Hebrews, sorry, Romans 4, 16. This is why the promise is by faith. What is the promise? Now, before the cross, the promise was you are going to see your Savior. Woo! Jesus. In the book of Job, he says this, my eyes will behold my Redeemer. Job 19.35. I believe that's the correct passage. I know my Redeemer lives. lives. Not came, not was alive, past tense. Present yes. tense. We just saw with Leonard Ravenhill, John 14.19. He says this. He says this. Let me just go there real quick. I, I want to quote exactly what Jesus says. In a little while, the world will see me no longer. In fact, they don't see him. They can't see him. Mm. Unless they see you acting like him. And that's why you are being sanctified to look like him so that you can, so that they can see you. Why do you think yeah. most of the world sees Christians? Because that was God's plan from the beginning. That all men will be gathered unto him. He says, but you will see me. That's faith. Because I live, you will live too. Heaven is not the goal. If you want Jesus now, you're in heaven. Now, you're not in the physical, you're not physically there yet, okay? It, this is, we're dealing with metaphysics. Every saint of old has said that the unseen is more real than the scene. I know that to be true. You can't shake what happened to me April 9th, 2021. 
He says this, In that day you will know that I'm in my Father. You are in me, and we forget I am in you. If he's in you, it's going to hurt. Your fl- I will say your flesh will hurt. Mm. It doesn't feel good. Every inconvenience. I didn't ask for this. God said, I don't care. Mm. But I ordained it for you. You going to complain against me? Jonah. In the book of Jonah. Can I not do what I want? Mm. Am I not the creator of all the universe? Job. He says... What are you? Can you set the lim- tell the oceans to go this further and put a limit on it? Can you do that? Can you cause a deer to give birth? No. Can you set the heavens? Can you count the stars? No. What did Job say? I have spoken once. I will not speak twice. I put my hand over my mouth and I repent in utter ashes. I done screwed up. Stink. Who do you think you are? So, Romans 5, uh, 4, 20, he did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God because he was fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. Ooh. And what was that? Raise the dead. Mm. Bring death, bring life where there's death. Thermodynamics, I talked with Esther about this uh, last night, and, and I don't know how much she was able to capture because she was downright exhausted trying to clean up and everything. I was showing her the boiler. A couple laws of thermodynamics. One, everything wants equilibrium. Or, you know, one of the laws is everything in this place needs equilibrium. Light will always go to where there's darkness. Heat will always go to where there's cold. High pressure will always go to where there's low pressure. If you wonder and say, God, I want to go where there's a bunch of Christians, God help you. Mm. Why do you want to be a light bulb among a bunch of light bulbs? Amen. (laughs) Amen. You better go to the deepest, darkest place because you are bringing equilibrium to that area. You better be so on fire in Jesus because he's going to send you somewhere cold. The kingdom of God is not spread by a whole bunch of Christians gathering around each other. Last time we had a whole bunch of people surrounded each other uh, in their own community, we had Adolf Hitler. And Germany lost most of its Jews because they refused to leave. They wanted their, their group. We're a bunch of Jews. We must, we must band together. And then they also had a little nasty bug called Tay-Sachs disease, which is fatal because of inbreeding. Um, mm. Esther can share a lot of the Amish diseases because of inbreeding. You put water in an area and there's no outlet for it to go and it's stagnant. Mm. You get disease in mosquitoes. Okay. Wow. You need to go. You need to go where God sends you. You need to go to the deepest, darkest pit assuming you've been talking to the king and say, send me to within a yard of hell while most people are in the safety of a chapel bell. Mm. C.T. Stud. He said that. I will get to the whole faith and hope issue. Now it was credited to him was not written for Abraham alone. Listen. What child are you? Are you a child of Abraham or a child of the law? God help you that you're a child of the law. You'll have nothing but wrath all your life because the law brings forth your sin and the judgment of God. But also for us, it will be credited to us who believe in him who also raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Therefore, since we have been declared Righteous by what we do, who we are, our race. I'm Israeli, I'm Jewish by background, by our creed. No, by faith. It's nothing, anything you did. It is the fact that there's something outside that's greater than me and there's no way for me to get there outside of saying, you're better than me, Lord. 
We have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ. We've obtained access through Him by faith. Let's go Hebrews 1 and 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That very substance. It's tangible. It's like this phone. I can grab it, touch it, taste it. Mm -hmm. Substance. Or okay. Or yes. Food, money, substance, things. Yes. Here's here. I'm going to show you. Here is the yes. outcome of your faith. Romans 5.3. Not only that, we also rejoice in our financial wealth. New card. No, no. Our afflictions. Mm. Because our affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character. Proven character produces hope. The, this hope will not disappoint us. That hope is Jesus Christ. He is the living hope. Every day. Every day. That faith is not yours. You can't drum it up. I have faith. I have my faith. Bullstick. You don't. Galatians 2.20. It is not I that lives, but Christ lives within me. The life that I live in the faith of the Son of God. His faith, not yours. You think you can drum up faith? You think you can believe in Jesus Christ? Really? Really? Just wait. Go in the fires of affliction. Go out there in real life. Let someone slap you and they say, I love you. Let someone steal your job. The job that you so hoped for. The job that you so wanted. And they knew the person. They had a better connection. Blood is thicker than water. And you were told, well, we had a, we had a prior arrangement. But we made an agreement to, for me to do the job. Well, it's not going to work out. But you're violating your word. It, it, well, I got to go. You're in a moment of decision. Do you understand? You're in a moment, moment of decision. Am I going to bear the reproaches with Messiah? He, uh, with, as it was said about Moses, Hebrews 11, 26. Or you could demand your rights, still holding on to what's here on this earth. Mm. Say, Lord, you voice a complaint to the Lord. Absolutely, that's where the relationship is built off of. Lord, this isn't right. They violated this. But your word says to bless and not curse. Jesus, this hurts me. Here, here's your sacrifice. Watch, watch, watch. Here's your sacrifice. Folks, physically do this. Look at me. Look at me. Wow. Do it. You're going to feel so weird. Even if it happened in a grocery store. Even if it happened at a person's office. And say, thank you so much. For giving me the opportunity to at least talk to you. And they will look at you like you're on crack. Mm. What are you smoking? And you're like, thank you so much. You have a blessed day. Now you're trusting the one. Mm. Because Jesus had this very world. He's going to get everything here. Plus every person known to man on this earth. He's going to have it all. It's going to, he will own it. Some go to destruction. Some go to his presence. But he's still going to own it. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That's what the scripture says. He will be Lord of all. Lord, master. He'll be master of all. So you hang on to here. Oh, sure. You may have pleasure for a little bit. But guess what? You just got missed a blessing. Mm -hmm. You just missed out and lacked faith. Mm -hmm. And you did not count on that assurance that God had it right there for you. Instead, you wanted your toys now. Thank you, Father. You, I, I need to testify in that. You need, that means you wanted your soup now. Be because, you know. Come on. I have to testify to that because that's the change that the Holy Spirit has given me. When I go out for a job and I'm turned away, see, when it's ordained by God that you will receive. 
Because I understand in my relationship with the Father, I don't get anything by chance. It's by faith. So I've had situations where I've been turned away. And I smiled. Amen. And I say, thank you, Father. This is not what you have for me. Amen. And I continue to go out and put in applications. Amen. You, you see, I understand what you're saying, Brother Rest, because if you don't have faith, you will want to receive the things that you think are guaranteed and yours that are of this earth. You're guaranteed. Nothing. Only there. Only only your there. guarantees only come from the kingdom. Amen. Let me read Hebrews 11. Uh, this is this is very important. Go to Hebrews 11, verse 32. We'll start at 32. And um, we'll end in 12.1. Um, okay. 12.2, uh, excuse me. Hebrew? Hebrews, yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's, there's another scripture passage that... I've got to get to the Lord is, is telling me you've got to talk about this. Okay. Um, I had nothing planned, and, and it, it, it gets worse the Holy every, Spirit, every. The Holy Spirit moves. It, it, it has yeah. to be. The Holy Spirit moves. So, uh, and, and, and I want to share something about your, because I've walked that road, application after application. That's actually, let's, let's put it this way. That is the walking out of your faith. That is the physical display of your faith. You are walking in faith that God will give you what. He and only he has a day. That's right. That's right. And and that is the exercise. It's like I can only lift one. I can only lift two. That walking out. What's this? It's your faith muscle. It is your faith exercise. So and what more can I say? So what's this faith going to get you? Time is too short for me to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith. So this is what we see. Conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions. Uh, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength after being weak, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight. Sounds wonderful. Yes, these are wonderful people. Yeah, but you don't see the ugly side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Women received their dead. They were raised to life again. So here's where your, here is the outcome of your faith. This is what faith is going to get you. This is a hard message. This is what faith will get you. I'm going to give a warning. You guys want faith? Who in here wants faith? This is what gets you. Some men were tortured. Not accepting release. So that they may gain a better resurrection. Others experienced mockings. We don't need to go to Afghanistan to experience mockings. We have it in, five, in zip code 56345. We have it on our jobs. Every dirty look. I'm sorry, that's a curse. Hebrew calls it evil eye. Because their heart is evil. <laughs> yes. And, and, and we do get it. Amen. Scourgings. Amen. Are they not... If looks could kill you, be dead ten times over? How many of you guys experience that? They just look at you and you feel like you're being assassinated ten times by 50 caliber sniper shots, <laughs> as well as bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sodden too. They died by the sword. Or how about, I mean, these, these people actually physically died. Sword, like what? Evil words are like sword thrusts? Yeah. They wandered about in sheepskin. They at least had something on their bodies. In goatskins, destitute, afflicted mistreated here's the encouragement the world was not worthy of them Amen. I love what, what Leonard Ravenhill said so Jesus goes to the cross there's huge fanfare and he died oh what a letdown but then he did not reveal himself to the whole world in his resurrection but only to a select few do you understand that if Jesus has revealed himself to you praise God you're among the, the, the 12 that were in the upper room at least or 120 he didn't reveal himself to the whole known world that way. He revealed himself to you. Christ was revealed in me, not to me, in me. They wandered in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. And they were approved through their faith. And they didn't receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for us so that they would not be made perfect 
without us. Do you guys understand their faith hinges on your faith? Let me say that again. This book is useless without your faith. I mean, yes, God, God wrote the book, the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, through men, uh, men uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and God's word does go out. He does not let his word return void. God is counting on you that book. to prove these people who died. And through, if there was no faith, the entire okay. book would be non-existent okay. because it was written by, by God through men with faith. That's right. That's so, right. If there was no, if faith was non-existent, if let's say, I don't know, David, when he was writing Psalms, had had no faith, or Abraham had not had faith, um, the Bible would be drastically different than what we see today. That's, because it would, it would still be written, but because God would find a way to write it. But God needs different people. It would not be the people who are. Who God needs the testimonies of all. Yeah. And today, he is using you today Amen. to prove the testimony of his faithfulness. Every time you fall down, and we fall down, don't we? Yes, yes we do. Yes. But every time you get up is another notch in God's faith belt. Another notch in God's faithfulness belt. If you have not read the life and diary of David Brainerd, you need to. He struggled with depression. He was lonely. He was exposed to the elements. He died at the age of 29 to tuberculosis. He saw revival among the Delaware Indians. And uh, Jonathan Edwards published it from the Great Awakening. John Wesley would say, make sure every one of these young preachers get a, a copy of this young man's life, life and diary of David Brainerd. Anybody who ever did anything for the Lord, they received everything that was spoken of in the life and diary of David Brainerd. He said, and it, it, I'm going I'm to warn you, it's going to sound depressing because he struggled with depression. He said, and they didn't have psychologists back then. He just had to trust the Lord. He would kneel in the snow. He, he, he gave his life to prayer no matter what. And he was so anguished at useless and fruitless conversations. And he would walk away caught. What is my life? But you came and you comforted me. God, I struggled with mental anguish, but you comforted me a little. You gave me difficulty that taught me to turn and seek your face. And, and my face, your face I have sought, and you have strengthened me. And you see it day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. I love Corey Ten Boom. She would crochet a crown, but on the back side she showed, this is our life. A bunch of lines and strings going nowhere. They're like it doesn't make anything. When we die, she flips it. This is what happens, and you see a beautiful crown. In God's presence, the failures of the flesh. Now granted, we, we, we must listen and obey. But where you slip up and you're like, oh God, I didn't even see that. I'm so sorry. Praise God, because he's chastising you as his son. So that you learn to do it better. And we do mess up. We do mess up. And God says, there's grace. Only because it costs the Son of God every last drop of blood. Don't take his grace for sin. God forbid, that's Romans 6. But accept his forgiveness and release. When you, say to, when you fall down and you run to the Father and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, I messed up. They were approved by faith since God had provided something better for us so that they would not be made perfect without us. Therefore, since we have such a large, large crowd of witnesses, people who were like you, men, of, men and women of like passions, fell down, rose up, fell down, rose up, fell down, rose up, the righteous stumble seven times and recovers surrounding us. Lay us let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance, not with performance, endurance. Amen. The race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on with all one word. Come on. Jesus. Let, let me hear it again. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, Jesus the source and perfecter of our faith. Amen.
So where does that leave us? Go to 1 Timothy 6, and this, this will be the end of that. Verse 5. 1 Timothy 6, verse 5. Think, uh, uh, okay. Um, start where it says false doctrine and human greed, depending on the version you have. Teach and encourage these things. Paul's talking to Timothy. So what you guys are hearing now, the message of the cross, the preaching of the blood, covers us and washes us from all sin. And that preaching of the resurrection, that his life gives us hope. If anyone teaches other doctrine and does not agree with the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teaching that promotes godliness, he is conceited, understanding nothing, but has a sick interest in disputes and arguments over words. From these come envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions. And constant di disagreement among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth, who imagine that godliness is a way to material gain, you're not going to be popular for having faith. Period. Mm -hmm. You will not make money. Stop trying. <laughs> Stop trying to have a... I'm speaking to myself because I wanted this too. Stop trying to have a ministry in an attempt to be supported. No. No, 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 no. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You brought nothing into the world, you're going to take nothing out. Amen. But if we have food and clothing, you're not even guaranteed shelter. Yeah. Amen. We will be content with these. Those who want to be rich fall into temptation. Stop. Just stop. Money is only paper. When Leanne died, money became paper. Wow. Money became, it's useless. It is stupid. Let it, let it not get a hold of you. Because Ezekiel 16 says, those who have idols in their heart, God will talk to you through that idol. And you'll be condemned by that very thing that you so hold on to. Because you're holding on to that idol. You're holding on to that thing. And I need, to, I need to address this. The statement that was made was, come to the cross with your past and failures. Look at the resurrection to remind us of your triumph over difficulties. You do have triumph over this world. Because Jesus rose. He triumphed over the grave. I've heard people would, you know, um, psychologists, Christian psychologists, and it breaks my heart because they would try to take you to your past and see Jesus there. You don't go to the past. No, you take the past to the cross. The past needs to die. Everything about you needs to die. Jesus says you must be born again. Well, how do you become born again? Die first! Die! Your old habits? Don't try to come to get cleaned up. No, come to die. Yes. Jesus didn't come to make you better. He came to raise you from the dead. Die. You are a living sacrifice. Lift it up. There is the big death of your... You know, how long does it take to get saved? A moment in a lifetime. There's the initial, all right, Lord, I come here to die. I give my life to you. I, I'm done living for myself. I, I'm yours. And there are moments in life where you have to say, okay, Lord, I've tried that. Okay, I give up. Not my will, but yours be done. And you will go through that. That's, gonna be, that's the pattern of life. Look at the days of the week. We have seven days a week. We have 12 months a year. 365 days a year. We have cycles. Death, burial, resurrection. Let that be a pattern of your life. That's the way of the cross. That's the way of the scripture. Don't hold on to your sin. Don't hold on to your... Stop holding on to your past. That's what faith is when Paul says, in, the writer of Hebrews says in, what, 12, 1, 12, 2? Let us therefore lay aside every what? Wait. Weight and sin. You're holding on to your past. I came from a such and such family. My daddy was a, I did this filth and bring it to the cross. First John 1 9, if we confess our sin, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse Amen. us from all unrighteousness. Confess it. Open it. Be open. The encouragement is every... If you, have a, if you have a testimony of how God saved you and it's not pleasant, bear the cross and speak it out. Share it. Share it in public. And if they throw stones at you, rejoice because you're doing it for Jesus. Amen. You know, tell people, hey, guilty. I was a sex addict. I was a manipulator of women and I was a narcissist. People say, are there any hope for narcissists? Yes, yes. you're looking at one. Mm. Guys, do it. Don't be afraid. Yes. Well, I may break down and cry. Break down and cry. Let the cross have it. What? It's full effect on you. Amen. Let it happen. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your touch. I, I, I don't know what I did other than obey you and deliver what you gave to your people. That's what they need to hear. Let your word have its full effect in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.